If you like the necromancer, but you are not interested in all of the minion hype, the bone spirit necromancer is actually gonna be crazy in Diablo 4's season 4. Not only are you getting a lot of new tempers that are making the build probably the most synergistic in the whole of Diablo 4, but you are also getting crazy amounts of multipliers. Macro is taking care of the Bone Spirit Necromancer Endgame Build Guide on Max Roll. As you can see here, this is currently in Season 3 state, but as soon as we press the magical Season 4 button for Max Roll, everything will be updated. And uh, you can find everything in written form on Max Roll and also obviously Macro's take on the Bone Spirit uh, Necromancer, this will also be the main version we are recommending on Max Roll. But if you are interested in my take on the Bone Spirit Necromancer, uh, in Diablo 4's Season 4, you will actually notice that the amount of synergies this bad boy can fit is actually insane. I am a big synergy enjoyer. I, that's why I love PoE so much, because there is so much crazy stuff that you can combine and create completely new things. And Bone Spirit is actually going in that direction, which makes me very, very happy. Now, we do have quite a lot of synergies. I will get into those um, uh, in a second here. Just let's first cover how Bone Spirit is going to work in its um, pure state, basically. So the idea of Bone Spirit is it's going to be um, a lot of damage, but they are balancing it out by giving it a huge cooldown and they're going to drain all of your essence whenever you are casting Bone Spirit. So usually on its own, that doesn't really sound that crazy. But if you can eliminate those two things from Bone Spirit, it's actually a gigantic nuke that is just going to kill literally everything in just a few hits uh, when it comes to bosses. Every trash mob is instantly a one shot. So we will have to uh, solve these two problems for Bone Spirit. Um, we do this already with the modifiers in the skill tree. As you can see here, Bone Spirit in the um, first upgrade actually is going to give you a cooldown reduction on Bone Spirit whenever you are critically striking. So this already makes it a five second cooldown. So that basically just um, shifts the problem from having to solve the cooldown to having to solve 100% critical strike chance. And since we are playing a bone build, it is super easy. Even without having to rely on grasping veins um, being activated by your corpse tendrils. So the grasping veins on the amulet is actually not here for the crit chance whatsoever. It's literally just for the multiplayer. So we do not rely on the grasping veins to hit 100% crit cap all of the time at all. So um, very important to notice here. So with all of the crit um, that we have um, natively in Bone Spirit baked in, so 20% is coming from Bone Storm, which is going to be permanently active. I'm going to explain in the synergies section how we're achieving that. So you already have 20%. Then you also have Swelling Curse, which is going to give spirit, uh, Bone Spirit another 25. So we're at 45 here already. Then we do have Inspiring Leader with another 12. So that's 57 already. We do have on the Paragon board, we do have the Entomb Glyph, which is, uh, where is it? It's literally right here. That gives us 4% bonus uh, bone critical strike chance. And... Last but not least, we also have Serration, which is going to help us quite a little bit. But if we do not take Serration into consideration, then we need to have 37 crit chance on our character to hit permanent 100% critical strike chance. And as you can see right here, uh, the character has an absolute minimum amount on the gear. So literally just crit on the hands on the, uh, both of the rings, and we're already sitting at 44% crit chance. So it's going to be extremely easy to hit that breakpoint of 37% critical strike chance on your character itself. It's actually that easy that we can um, sacrifice the defenders for resistances. We don't even need to sacrifice the skirmishers for additional crit chance. That's how easy it is going to be to have the first... Uh, issue solved for Bone Spirit, where we said we need to uh, get the get the, uh, the cooldown activation from always critically striking, but there is still um, five seconds of cooldown on the Bone Spirit. This is going to be further decreased by the rapid ossification that we have here. Every hundred essence 
we're spending our bone skills, which involves bone spirit, is going to be reduced by 1.5 seconds. So as, as you know, we're using all of our essence. We do have 180, but let's just go with the absolute minimum value. Let's just say it just gives us 1.5 seconds of minus uh, cooldown reduction. So we're already sitting at 3.5 um, seconds cooldown on bone spirit. The rest is going to be reduced by a 13.2% cooldown reduction on the helmet, which is basically our own uh, our only source of cooldown reduction in the build. We don't really need to fit more because on top of that, we do have Bone Prison, which is going to reduce our active cooldowns by 0.5 seconds um, for every enemy that is trapped in the Bone Prison. So let's say that's 0.5 seconds on a boss, for example, that further reduces the cooldown already. And then last but not least, obviously we are playing Abhorrent Decrepify. This is basically giving you a Bone Spirit um, with maybe one second cooldown. So you literally can just uh, hold down the button. And again, this is all calculated with all of the minimum values in mind. So you will have a very easy time to literally literally just hold down, right click and bone spirit away. Now the other problem with the essence, as you can see, essence cost all remaining essence. So if you can hold down right click to cast bone spirit over and over and over again you kind of need to make sure your essence actually stays high because bone spirit is going to get a multiplier depending on how much essence uh, essence you have spent when casting bone spirit so ideally you want to regenerate as much and as quickly as possible so that is also a pretty easy thing to do because Blizzard was so nice to bake in dreadful bone spirit. We are going to regenerate 30% of our maximum essence over the next four seconds after casting bone spirit, but that's uh, that on alone is not going to be enough. We do have uh, essence per second on the boots as well, and that's our only slot where we want this. I'm actually really happy we get a stat like this for basically all of the... Um, resource problems that we had these are now very easily solvable um so yeah there is that but that wouldn't be enough still we because we're using all of the remaining essence on top of that we do get crazy tempers as you can see here we do have this um macabre temper that is going to restore with just one of the masterwork crits uh 36 primary essence on macabre skill use so obviously we are able to stack that on all of the jewel jewelry which is going to allow us to instantly restore 108 essence every time we're pressing bone spirit so that alone is going to um, give you quite a huge multiplier for bone spirit itself because you're basically at 108 essence all of the time, giving you a big multiplier way above 400 on the damage itself, just from having the tempers on your jewelry. And last but not least, to further help the essence generation, we're also playing Shattered Spirits Ring. And in this case, you will actually be able to uh, regenerate your essence very, very easily by shooting quite a lot of bone splinters into your enemies. You can actually shoot all of the available bone uh, splinters into a boss if you basically play this build as a melee character. So if you are very, very close, you're shooting the bone spirit inside of the hitbox of the boss and then all of the bone spirit shards or bone splinters rather are going to hit the boss like this. So you will instantly refill your essence and not have to worry about your essence generation whatsoever. Now, after the two aforementioned problems for bone spirit are now solved, we will go into how to scale the damage even higher and also into a little bit more synergies. Now, I said we are going to have a permanent bone storm up. First and foremost, the rapid ossification is going to help us do that. So every time we are pressing our bone spirit or holding down our right click for bone spirit, we are getting a 1.5 second reduction on the cooldown of bone storm. Bone storm starts out with 60%, but if you remember, that is going to be further reduced with the cooldown by the cooldown reduction that we have on the helmet. So that in itself is already going to be um, a much, much lower cooldown because we, again, just hold down the right click. And every time you see a bone spirit, you can already deduct 1.5 seconds cooldown 
from your uh, bone storm itself. So that is going to go down tremendously fast. But on top of that, we also have the bone prison, which is going to help us by trapping monsters inside of it and then reducing the uh, cooldown or our, our active cooldowns by up to three seconds. Let's just say it's a boss encounter. So that's just 0.5 seconds. That's not really that much. But then again, Bone Prison basically also doesn't have a cooldown because everything that affects Bone Storm is also going to affect Bone Prison itself. So that's going to be a very, very heavy synergistic um, positive feedback loop right here. So I'm, I'm a big fan of stuff like this. So I'm really, really happy to uh, be able to finally play a build that has these positive feedbacks, uh, feedback loops and is going to scale crazy hard into the late game. Uh, furthermore, we are going to have the Bone Storm duration tempered on our two-hander, which instantly makes Bone Storm last 18.5 seconds already. So it's very easy to reduce this uh, 54 second cooldown um, uh, so it gets ready after 18.5 seconds because we have let's say at least 10% cooldown reduction here that's where I, uh, why I came up with the 54 seconds here so like this you will actually be able to have a permanent bone storm up all of the time which prompted me to use shielding storm on the pants and you will permanently profit of the damage reduction and also the 20% crit which is necessary for all of the steps that uh, we have discussed before but obviously the tempers have shaken up the meta quite a lot and this is going to be very crazy um, having this amount of defense coming from the shielding storm and the permanent bone storm combo while also having a two-hander now you might also ask why am I recommending a scythe here? And if you have seen the previous videos about uh, the shadow minions, for example, um, then I detail why that is actually the case. As you can see here, the highest damage um, possible or the average hit here is going to be calculated um, from the damage per hit that you can see here. And uh, the scythe has the highest damage here because it's actually balancing itself out or equalizing across different weapon times. So uh, two-hand scythe, two-hand sword, for example, with the attacks per second. But we don't really care that much about the attacks per second for our bone spirit because we are still going to be uh, attacking really, really fast. And we kind of have a very, very minuscule cooldown, which is not even going to matter at all. Um, in terms of the weapon. So just go for the scythe here and uh, try to actually benefit of a higher average damage compared to the two-handed sword. So apart from all of that, how are we actually scaling the damage even further? So we're going to be using the Swelling Curse, obviously, which is going to scale the damage by providing more maximum essence. And we're using the Grasping Veins, as I mentioned earlier. But again, this is not for the critical strike chance at all, but instead it is actually for the bonus critical strike damage multiplier that is going to be active whenever you are corpse tendrilsing. And actually corpse tendrils cooldown is also going to be affected the same amount, well, minus the uh, rapid ossification here because that's just for bone skills. But all of the other stuff that I mentioned, the, the crepify, the cooldown reduction from the bone prison, um, reduction is going to be affecting corpse tendrils so the uptime on corpse tendrils is going to be quite high actually uh, especially on bosses there it's going to be necessary to get that juicy 20% crit damage multiplier and uh, yeah obviously having the uh, grasping veins multiplier active then we're using serration on the two-hander for that 80% multi we're using um the concussive strikes here just in hopes to get um, the days off of some of the more beefier enemies when the pit scales to t200 we will have to see if that maybe can come in clutch not only defensively because days is a pretty good um cc that you can inflict on the enemy but also the 20 percent multiplier is going to help then we're using the plunging darkness which is going to drop a pool of blight every time we are using our bone prison. If you remember, bone prison basically doesn't have a cooldown because of all of the stuff that is affecting bone. Spirit is also going to be affecting bone prison. And on top of that, we do have three points in blight, which is uh, right here. We do have the blight, we have the enhanced blight, and we do have the separate natural blight for a 20% additional multiplier which again is just playing into the whole synergistic thing that Bone Spirit has going on for itself. And on top of that, since we now have a shadow damage over time 
um, ability, we can also scale our damage by incorporating Wither on the Paragon board. Usually you would need something like, well, Blight on the skill bar itself, but we circumvent that issue by uh, using Plunging Darkness. Or you would use uh, something like Blighted Corpse Explosion, for example. But we don't need to do this. If we just take the Plunging Darkness, we take the um, Scourge uh, Glyph right here. This aspect basically means get a 30% damage multiplier for your Bone Spirit. And that is actually quite a lot of value um, for the investment of uh, three skill points, in my opinion. Um, I don't think you can get 10% uh, uh, multiplier per one kill point that's pretty rough to find on all of the other builds so actually plunging darkness is extremely strong and maybe flies a little bit uh, under the radar uh, because if you if you combine it that way it's actually a 30 percent multiplier just for one aspect and you basically have two skills in one you have bone prison and you have blight um probably one of the strongest synergies in entire diablo 4 maybe uh, we will have to see how um, that is actually going to square up with the other classes. In my opinion, one of the strongest, one of the coolest as well. So, um, yeah, especially because you save one skill on the skill bar, that's actually quite huge. Then the other stuff, uh, typical uh, mobility and defensive stuff, slaughter to give us around 70% movement speed on the boots. We don't really have that much more, but I think that's still fine. Um, then obviously shielding storm due to the a permanent bone storm that we have and we're also using hardened bones because that's probably one of the best defensive aspects that you can currently run definitely on the uh, necromancer maybe also one of the best defensive things that you can actually run on all of the classes but we do have uh, that one for us only. So that's the Bone Spirit and Necromancer from my POV, basically. If you want to have the written guide, I will link down in the description the official Bone Spirit, Necromancer, Endgame build guide from Macro Bioboy. It is, again, going to be updated as soon as we pu push the uh, Magical Season 4 button, and then you can actually see his take and his thorough explanation on everything in regards to Bone Spirit. And if you like content similar to this, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.